Hello, in this video we're going to graph a parent function called the exponential function. The exponential function is basically when you have your variable in the exponent. So for example, instead of saying x squared, we'll have 2 to the x. Now this base could be really any number. It could be e, it could be 10, it could be a fraction. In this particular example, just to, so we can graph the basics, we're going to start off with 2 to the x. Now if we're if we really don't know anything about this function, well, I really would recommend that we start off with a table of values. So let's make a table of values, x and y, and let's start putting in various values in for x. Now, obviously, uh, some of the most important ones are negative 1, 0, and 1, but we actually may, uh, may try negative 2 and then and say positive 2. So instead of starting top to bottom actually let's just jump in to do the, the very easiest one two to the one when x is one well what's y y has to be two how about two to the two two squared when x is two y is four this should make perfect sense now you have to remember your exponent rules to do the rest of these anything raised to the zero power so if if x is zero two to the zero has to be what well it has to be one anything to the zero power is one so when we do our graph this is actually going to be a very a very important uh, number right here zero comma one how about negative one now again you have to know your exponent rules two to the negative one the negative exponent means we take the reciprocal of the base this really means one half raised to the one power so that answer is one half negative two well, what's 2 to the negative 2? Again, the negative exponent means we take the reciprocal of the base. The reciprocal of 2 is 1 half. Now, 1 half is being raised to now the second power. What's 1 half to the second? That's 1 fourth. So now we have a series of values which we can plot on our graph. One of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put some tick marks here. Let's, um, let's count every 2. Uh, blue units. So this is one, two, three. So we'll we'll, we'll essentially count by um, two tick marks is is one unit. So let's label label this a little bit here. One of the important things about graphing parent functions is we get a good idea of the domain and range. So one of the things we'll actually take a look at is the domain and the range. So let's, uh, let's go to graphing. Let's uh, change my pen size here. So let's start off with our magic point, 0, 1. So 0, 1 is, um, is a very important point. 1, 2, so over 1 uh, to the right, or I'm sorry, up to 1, 2. And 2, 4. 2, 1, 2, 3, uh, 4. Now let's do the negative values. Negative 1, comma, 1 half. So negative 1, now 1 half is right there. And then negative 2, comma, 1 fourth. Negative 2, and then 1 fourth is about right there. So if we were to, to sketch the graph that connects these points, that, that graph is approximately like this. Now I hope you see that this graph first off we can have any values of x at all we can have a huge value of x like x is 100 well that's just 2 to the 100 which is a really large number we can also have a very large negative values x is negative 100 which will give us a very 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 small positive fraction so the domain really is all real numbers okay all real numbers or x goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. So x is greater than negative infinity, but x is less than positive infinity. All right. Now how about this range? Well, if you take a look, there's no way that we can get a negative value for the y, for the y value. Even if we put in positive or negative or even fractional values, there's no way that, that y is going to end up being negative. It'll get infinitely close to zero, but it'll never be negative. So the range is really all positive values. Y has to be greater than zero. Not equal to, it's never going to be equal to. So that brings us up to another point, and this is the, uh, it's called an asymptote. So we're going to have an asymptote 
It's spelled A-S-Y-M-P-T-O-T-E. And the asymptote is going to be essentially the x-axis. So we'll highlight that in, uh, in green. The asymptote is essentially going to be, well, I can't really see that, can we? The asymptote is going to be this horizontal line. All right, the asymptote. And the asymptote means it's an imaginary line that our graph gets infinitely close to. All right, so if we were to, let's, uh, let's actually sketch that up here. If we were to sketch our asymptote, first off, here are your axes, and then here's the graph, and then the asymptote is just a, a dashed line. All right, gets infinitely close to that. So let's take a look at another example. In this next example, we're going to have a different base. And our base in this case is going to be 1 half. So we're going to say x, I'm sorry, y equals 1 half raised to the x power. So again, let's do the exact same thing we did before. Let's make a table of values. All right, table of values. And let's just do the classic. So we'll do from negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And again, it's really important you know your exponents. But let's start off, let's start off with the, the easiest one, which is 1 half to the 1. 1 half to the 1 is 1 half. How about 1 half to the 2? Well, that's 1 half squared. That's 1 fourth. Now, what about our 0 uh, power? And again, anything to the 0 power. 1 half to the 0 is 1. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Now we get into this, these negative exponents. Remember the negative exponents, if I say 1 half and I raise this to the negative 1 power, the negative 1 says I'm going to take the reciprocal of the base. This really means 2 to the 1, which is 2. How about negative 2? 1 half raised to the negative 2 power, this means I take the reciprocal of the base, so that's 2 over 1, and I raise this to the 2 power, so that's 4. So I hope you see we, we have the exact mirror image of what we had uh, before. Let's put in our, our tick marks. So we're counting every, every two blue lines is a, is a, uh, is a unit. And then let's, let's go ahead and graph these. Let's do this in, uh, let's do it in purple this time. Um, so let's start off with, I don't know, say 0, comma 1. This is our magic point. And then as we go to the right, 1 comma 1 half, 2 comma 1 fourth. Negative 1 is going to be comma 2, and then negative 2 comma 4. So if we were to sketch a line between these, that line would come down like this. And it wouldn't actually touch it wouldn't actually touch the y, I'm sorry, the x-axis. You're going to have an asymptote. All right, the asymptote is going to be uh, this horizontal line. You're never going to, never going to touch uh, the line y equals zero, asymptote. All right, so again, domain and range. Again, one of the useful things about graphing a parent function is to determine the domain and range. You should see that we can have any values of x, positive, negative, fractional values. So the domain is the set of all real numbers. The range, however, again, we are never going to go negative on the y. So the range is going to be y has to be greater than 0. All right, that's about it.